Now, as evening falls and silence beckons to gather us in the arms of grace and rest, we pause for a few moments to remember this day and all which we have experienced. Now, as the hurry and worry of the day can be placed in the bin of forgetfulness, we quiet ourselves so we can reflect on where grace met us, where hope led us. Now, as we prepare ourselves for bed and slip, and to the arms of our God who watches over us, we will offer our fears as well as our hearts to the one who will cradle them during the night, mending our brokenness and giving us the courage to face tomorrow. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm for tonight is Psalm 27, and here's a paraphrase. In the increasing shadows of doubts and worries around us, come with your light of hope, God of the fearful. When we are afraid of what this night might bring or whether tomorrow will be an improvement, you gather us close to your heart with words of comfort and kindness. We are just so, so weary of all that has been going on for more days than we can count. It is not only recovering from the pandemic, for perhaps we just need to learn to continue to live with hope and confidence. But there are folks massing on the edge of countries with threats and weapons. There are places where borders are closed. There are people who cannot seem to move on. If it was just one thing we might be able to manage, but we, you continue to fill our hearts with trust that you are in control. There are moments when I would like to claim sanctuary in your house and hide away or go off into the woods and live in the silence of creation. But you, you would have me stay here where I am, knowing that you are as close to me as my next breath. So I will keep trying to stand up to the cruel bullies, the 
find your face in the folks I meet, to seeing when others encourage me to offer anger and bitterness, to stay as close to you as I can, even when everyone runs as far away as they can from me. For I still have so much to learn from you, even now, to discover how to turn off the seductive whispers of the foolish and to never give up hoping that when tomorrow comes, I will find your goodness has not withered away, and if I am but more patient, I will be able to go out and invite others to join me in the waiting. Our first reading tonight is again from the book of Genesis. We're reading verses 15 through 26 of the 50th chapter. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. This children of Machir, son of Manasseh, was also born on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So Joseph made the Israelites swear, saying, When God comes to you, you shall carry up my bones from here. And Joseph died, being 110 years old. He was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. And our Old Testament psalm tonight is verses 5 through 8 of Psalm 63. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast. My mouth speaks praise with joy on my lips. Whenever I ponder you on my bed, whenever I meditate on you in the middle of the night, because you've been a help to me and I shout for joy and the protection of your wings. My whole being clings to you. Your strong hand upholds me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen.
Now we turn to Mark's Gospel, reading verses 11 through 26 of the 8th chapter. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them. And getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And <clears throat> becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? You have eyes and fail to see. Do you have ears <coughs> and fail to hear, or do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, 12. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets of broken pieces did you collect? They said to, seven. He, they said to him, seven. Then he said to them, do you not understand? They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they looked like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently. And his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then Jesus sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. And then our New Testament song is from Psalm 94. Whenever I feel my foot slipping, your faithful love steadies me, Lord. When my anxieties multiply, your comforting calms me down. But the Lord is my fortress. My God is my rock of refuge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then the reflection for tonight comes from those devotions I wrote several years ago from Lent. This one is based on Mark eight seventeen through 18. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears? and fail to hear, and do you not remember? Our refrigerators are stocked, but we think we are hungry. Our hands can reach out, but we stick them in our pockets. Our eyesight is fine, but we cannot see justice. Our ears work well, but we do not hear whispers of pain around us. The pantries of our souls are stocked with grace, but we turn our back on others. We have passed every test but don't have a clue as to be God's people.
As we begin our time of prayer this night, let us think back over the day, those conversations we had, meals we shared, perhaps a cup of coffee or tea with a friend, enjoying creation, being around family and friends, just being realizing how graced and blessed we are. And let us in the silence offer up our prayers of thanks giving to our God. And we lift up prayers of need and hope for brokenness and pain and grief and worries and fears. We pray for people of faith, for faith communities, for those who care for their neighbors and friends and family members. We pray especially this night for the ministers, elders, and members of the churches in Lincolnshire, for peaceful resolution to the situation between the occupied Palestinian territories and Israel, as well as Ukraine and all those other places of brokenness, of war, of violence. We pray for Haiti, for the upheaval they're going through right now. We pray for Elaine Dre, secretary of former Ermont, Ermine URC in her pain and anxiety as she waits for her surgery. We pray for Jean, June Pevy, for Graham Galib following, following surgery and giving thanks for the medical team and praying for his recovery. We pray for the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen and her care and concern for him. For the Reverend Pat, Patrick Leggett, with Brenda Kenyon for Ron Kenyon. We pray with Sia for her grandson Alfie for his recovery. We pray with Allison for her parents, Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. We pray for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr for recovery from cancer treatment. For the Reverend Liz Adams, for the Reverend Hamish Temple, for Jean Schink and for the Reverend Brian Schink and his care and concern for her. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for Monia's parish priest, Father Andy. We pray with Anka Taya for her friend, ba Baya. With the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davidson for their daughter, Susie. For Cheryl, as well as for Prince and the family as they continue to care for her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth and their ongoing care of him. We pray for John and for Irene as she continues her care for him. We pray for Allison's sister, Caroline, and family on the death of Caroline's husband, Steve. For those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. For all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife, Lucy, and the family. We pray for all who grieve for the passing loved ones. And we pray for all those concerns and needs, those worries and doubts and struggles that we carry in our hearts. And we offer them up to you in silence this night, O oh God. For what shall we pray this night? On this lit and Wednesday, maybe we should mark ourselves with ashes again, God of our days to remind us that we are still human, still mortal, still all too foolish in our lives. For what shall we pray this night? On this Lenten Wednesday, perhaps we should pay more attention to what is going on in the world, Jesus of the poor and forgotten, all those places where injustice is entrenched, all the people losing lives and homes and family to violence, all the wildernesses of life where you are waiting for us to catch up and journey with you. For what shall we pray this night? On this Lenten Wednesday, remind us that we are led by your hope in the meals we shared this evening, Spirit who walks with us, and our thirst for grace is quenched by your living waters so we can rest in your peace and awake, refreshed, and ready to go and bring those gifts to others. For what shall we pray this night? On this Lenten Wednesday, may we remember that though they may be fed, faded or washed away, the ashes still mark us as your fragile, foolish, fallible family. They have never completely disappeared, but are deep within us 
as we seek to continue this familiar yet ever new, ever challenging pilgrimage, God in community, holy and one. Amen. And hear us now as we lift the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And may you rest in God's grace and love this night.